One of the first pitches that I saw um, was actually from Tom Lee, who's a friend of ours, who runs a really successful um, uh, uh, change the medical profession uh, business called One Life Medical here. Um, and Tom's an incredibly talented entrepreneur. And uh, one of the founders of Hippocrates. Yeah, which also is one founder of, of Hippocrates, yeah. Well. Um, and, uh, and I was just, I was blown away. I was like, wow, this guy has a great idea for a business. He knows how to execute it. It was an incredible kind of conceptual business model. Um, and, uh, and Benchmark decided to back him, and it's gone really well. But, you know, it, they've helped him a lot. I've watched kind of along, along the way the process, and even the things that they pointed out in that meeting, I think Tom would say, yep, those were things that, that were issues. So, uh, you know, I, I think as entrepreneurs, we have an inherent skepticism of the investor. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and a lot of that is deserved, as I just told you my, my own prior experience. Um, but I think good investors, um, the, the most important thing they do is make that decision to invest. Yeah. They help along the way as board members. They help you recruit people and those sort of things. But the most critical thing for them, and it's pattern recognition and understanding and seeing things. And it's, um, you know, I, I had an entrepreneur come in who I thought was super talented. And they had met with a couple of the partners. Um, and they had liked him. And then he, he was based in London. And he made the mistake of flying in kind of late the night before an early Monday morning meeting. Uh, and he did terribly in that partner meeting. And so I would have told you we were 80% likely to fund him before the meeting. And then it just was clear, like, there was nothing we could do to kind of get people over it because he just, he didn't, he yeah. wasn't able to get his message across because he was too tired. Sometimes I, I, I feel like most of us prepare to raise capital the same way you would prepare to take an SAT, but the right way to approach it is more like how you would go on a date or prepare for a date. And because you can have all the right answers and you can all, you know, have uh, uh, all the know-how and, and strategy, et cetera, and present incredibly well, uh, and still do very, very poorly. It's because it's this process in which is it, are we inspiring trust um, trust at the, at the level or will we stay with it when it gets really hard? Will we have the capacity to execute? And all of these things are much more likely, you know, like, like the way you would go and have a successful date. Yeah. Uh, much more of those elements are relevant than the ones um, to get a good SAT score, if you will. Yeah, and, and you know, they make mistakes. I mean, you know, um, Benchmark uh, famously passed on eBay twice before <laughs> they finally invested. Which has been the best investment they've ever done to right. date. Um, and um, lots of other, I mean, everybody passed on, you know, a whole series of successful companies. That, in fact, I actually sat in one of the first Twitter pitch meetings, and it was completely uninvestable. <laughs> the more messages people sent via SMS, the more money they lost. And there was no revenue. <laughs> it was like, so if this works, you're just going to run out of cash faster, right? I mean, it was... You know, but they, they eventually fixed it, and Benchmark did invest in Twitter. But um, so sometimes it also takes patience, where you sort of see there's a kernel of an idea, a kernel of an entrepreneur, um, but it, it it takes time for it to germinate. And so people yeah. will say, "Come back and see us again." And they're not just blowing you off; they actually want to see that you've solved some of those problems and they, they've they, that you've resolved it. Um, the other thing I would say, just for those of you that are trying to raise money here, um, it's really hard to raise money here from uh, for, for companies that are not based here. And it's not like, oh my God, only good companies can be built here. In fact, uh, we'll, we'll talk about SurveyMonkey, but I, I actually think it's kind of the opposite. You can build some really great companies not here. But it's hard to get those investors to invest in those companies. And the reason is, um, well, I'll put this nicely. Um, uh, They don't like to travel a lot. <laughs> I, 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 just, I, I think that's, I mean, and, and part I think there are a number of reasons, right? One is there's an opportunity because it's so easy to do. To, there's so many opportunities right at hand that why make that extra exactly. effort? There isn't anything particularly against South America or Africa no. or Southeast Asia. It's just that there's so much right here. Also, if I am a VC and I invest in a company here and I lose my money, uh, 
move on, that happens all the time. If I invest in a company in Brazil or in Turkey or in Indonesia and I lose my money, I'm more likely to lose my job. And yeah. And I think also, like, your ability to kind of, I mean, this is, you know, investors think about this as, you know, what's the market opportunity? Do you have a product idea that's going to solve that market opportunity? And do you have the right team? And the first two, you can kind of evaluate anywhere else. The team part is really critical, and some VCs you know, pay more attention to that than others. But a lot of it comes from sort of references, right? And it's very hard for them to reference people in Brazil or in Indonesia or in Jordan or whatever, because they don't have a relationship and set of contacts in those markets. Tell me about it. Every time one of these guys is raising capital, I get 15 calls. When is it? We don't know how to reference guys. <laughs> right? I mean, but that, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of the issue. So I think it's, um, but I think they do understand, and we're seeing a little bit more of it um, where people are you know, in certain pockets. Um, yeah. So one of my investors in SurveyMonkey is Tiger Global. Um, some of you may uh, have met them or work with them or have them as investor. They've been the most successful um, international internet investor. I but think interestingly, they are not in Silicon Valley, right? They're more. They're not in Silicon Valley. They're New York yeah. firms, and yeah. I see a lot more firms in New York and even Miami and DC and London be more prone to invest in Latin America or emerging markets than Silicon Valley firms. Yeah, I think that's right. 